perfect timing for Ava and Fasine. I want to share with you about ending child soldiering and finding healing <coughs> after war. Ava and Fasine. Thank you. You got it. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Fasine. Hi, everybody. My name is Ava van der Staren. Um, we're the founders of Innocence Loss Foundation. And today we're here to talk to you about this issue child soldiers. Um, we just want to share with you a little bit about what a child soldier is and um, what we're doing with our foundation to help end this in the world. So a child soldier is anyone that's under the age of 18 that's involved in an armed group. And there's estimated to be about 300,000 right now in the world. And 40% of which can be girls as well. Uh. Children uh, recruited in conflict um, can be younger than 10, 9, 8. Um, and as a recruitment process, these children sometimes are forced to kill their parents. And uh, sometimes they're forced to watch their parent get assassinated. And the whole, the whole intent behind that is to create a heartless uh, and fearless killing machine. So children are used in a variety of ways, not only on the front lines, but also as spies, messengers, informants, cooks, servants. And, um, es and uh, especially women, women, girl, child soldiers are used sometimes for sexual uh, slaves. Um, they can be used as human shields. And in countries like Nigeria, Somalia, and some parts in the Middle East, they can be uh, indoctrinated and used as, as suicide bombers. And this is actually still going on in the world. It happens in a lot of countries currently. In almost every country that's having a conflict right now, there are children that get caught up in the conflict and get used in war. So there's a list of a few countries here. And it, show how widespread that this is happening across the world. So we want to bring some awareness to this, and um, we want to help to end this in the world. We want to help end child soldiering. Um, in, in, some, in some conflicts around the world, um, you have UN and other peace mission, mission groups that uh, rescue child soldiers from conflict, but they don't have um, enough facilities to take care of the children. So. Um, Mostly after, they, after they, they keep them for a while, they don't have place to keep them. They release these children back to the communities. And some of these children don't, don't have um, their families anymore and they've lost their, their people. So they end up going back to the same militia group that kidnapped them. Because at least with the militia group, they can get food, shelter, and uh, protection during the war. So we started up a foundation called Innocence Lost Foundation. And what we want to do is we want to help with uh, providing more places for children to go once they're rescued out of war. So we want to create rehabilitation centers and we want to create community centers for um, countries and people that have been affected by war. I was Miss British Columbia in 2013 to 14 and I um, started this, I do acting and modeling and I started this, um, went and did this program and during it, my platform was rehabilitation of child soldiers. So Fascinate inspired this cause for me. Um, it's an issue that's close to us. And um, we met in film school. And I saw the things that he went through um, growing up in war and how that affected him and the after effects of what it has and how he was using art and music and writing to help him with his healing. So he inspired the foundation, and together during my year as Miss BC, we decided that we wanted to do something about this, and we started the Innocence Loss Foundation. Um, a little bit about me. I was born in Sierra Leone. It's um, on the west coast of Africa. Um, we're bordered with Guinea and Liberia and the Atlantic Ocean. Um, after, the, after we gained independence in 1961 from Britain, 
uh, Sierra Leone was ruled by corrupt governments that mismanaged the natural resources of the country, uh, which led to a collapse in the economy, uh, a weak civil society, civil servants were not getting paid, teachers were not getting paid, which created a collapse in the educational system. I was born in um, Kabbalah, uh, on the north of the country, right up there. Um, when I was a kid, my mom couldn't afford to send me to school because of the weak economy. So she sent me to go live with her, her brother, my uncle, in the south part of the country in a town called Tongafield. Uh, Tongafield is one of the richest diamond mining towns in Sierra Leone. I live with my uncle in Tongafield. I'll go to school during the day. And after school, I'll go walk in the mine for a little bit before I go home. Um, I was living like that until the RUF attack. The war started in 1991 to 2000. The RUF, um, the Revolutionary United Front, was created by Fodi Sankor. He was an ex-corporal who attempted to overthrow the government um, for years, but every time he, 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 when he attempted, he failed. They lock him up for a little bit and then they release him. So he went to Liberia and um, get help from Chastillo, who was an ex-CIA operative who started the war in Liberia, and Chastillo backed him and then they attacked Sierra Leone. And when they attacked Sierra Leone, they promised to bring change, to bring freedom like any other militia group in the world, to bring freedom, education, free education, but as time went on, they, they were mismanaging the, the diamonds and they realized they need more soldiers, so they changed tactics. They started going around, um, they would attack a town, kidnap the kids in the town, kill the grown-ups, and take the kids to a camp. And then they would train the kids and use those kids to go attack the next town, uh, kill the adults, and take those other kids. So by the mid-90s, um, the RUF has become a big uh, fighting group. And I was kidnapped um, in 1995. I was 10. And um, when I was kidnapped, I realized it's like this is the most horrible thing that will ever happen to me because by then they were hacking off uh, limbs. If you've seen Blood Diamond, that was real. RUF did hack off limbs and stuff like that. And I didn't want to be part of that, but I had to go with them. So I stayed with them for three months, but during the whole time, I was looking for a way out. And one day we took this town, Beidou, and um, we went into the houses, because when we take over town, uh, we go into the houses to loot. And I was, I was looking around, I saw a school uniform, like a student uniform, and I saw a book, and I look at the book, the name of the, the student who had the book is uh, Beidou Bori. And I was like, maybe if I take this book, and the uniform and put it in the backpack, maybe I can find a way to escape. And so we went looking around and I got to the edge of the town and I just make a run for it because there was no one around. And after running for a little bit, I dropped my gun, changed and put on the school uniform and went to um, the military checkpoint. Because uh, the military checkpoint, the military had a policy. If you've been fighting for the RUF, whether you kidnap, whether you force, whether you fight voluntarily, is summary execution. They will execute you at the point. So um, they asked me, uh, are you RUF? I said, no, I'm a student. Uh, what's your name? Bori. They look at the book. Oh, you student. And then they let me through. So I went back to Tonga Field to go look for my uncle. But he was gone. The house was burned down. And um, the soldiers had, at that moment, uh, driven the RUF out of the town. But I didn't have anywhere to go. So um, I decided um, to join the army as a recruit. Um, during my whole time in the army, there was moments when I was waiting. I was hoping that there's someone out there someday who just show up out of the blue and be like, stop fighting. I'm going to put you back to school. I'm going to create a life for you. And it never happened. And, um, it got to a point when I realized it would never happen. So with all my experience in the war, I never get rehabilitated. No one ever rescued me. So that's why um, when I finally figured out um, the effect of the war and finally being able to get through my pain past that, 
I realize there is still children fighting out there in the world, all over the world, and I think um, we together as a community, as because I see the world as a community, need to come together and start doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So for our first project, what we have is we want to build a community center in Kabbalah. And uh, this is the town where Fastening is from. And um, we, we want to have it as a place where we can help the people there. Even though the war has been over in Sierra Leone for 10 to 15 years now, there's still a lot of people who live in poverty and a lot of the cycles of abuse have continued and passing, are starting to pass down generationally. So we want to break that cycle. We want to have it to be a place where we can offer um, programs, we want to offer education, have students that, where their parents can't afford them to go to school, have primary school education for students like that, and to have adult education classes for people who are still illiterate because a large number of the population doesn't know how to read or write. Um, we want to have, um, let me just see here. Uh, we, we were thinking um, for the community center, uh, we started with the community center in Kabbalah because we want to prevent uh, the harms and the trauma people go through in war to pass on to the next generation. The war is over right now, but when the war ended, I didn't know when you live through war, there's after effects you have to live with for the rest of your life. I was just happy, oh, no one, I'm not trying to kill anyone, no one is trying to kill me anymore, until I moved out here to Canada, and um, that's when the past started creeping up with me. It was too normal, it was too, it was too calm. And in war, anyone who's been through war, you know there's always a calm before the storm. And there's that, that agitation, you're always waiting for something to happen. And the sleepless night, the nightmares. And I know if I had a kid back then, I know there's tendency for me to be abusive. And I wanna create, we want to create this foundation so at least we can start teaching people to, to understand what's happening in them and prevent them from traumatizing their kids and making this a generational issue. Mm -hmm. So we have a quick picture here. This is a picture of Kabbalah. This is what it currently looks like there, um, the town in northeast Sierra Leone where we want to build our first project. And so this is a street. Um, Fasteny's family still lives here. So this is his mom and his sisters and some of um, their kids. And so at the community center, we want to provide food and water. We want to provide uh, medical education, skills training programs, and art therapy. Um, because we've found that through going to film school and doing an acting program and just having music and writing as a way to express yourself that it is a good way to bring healing. And uh, we want to provide resources and opportunities to further the country and people. So at the center, these are some of the things that we want to include. We're going to have um, all these different buildings. We have um, some plans and we have a website where you guys can check that out a little bit more. Um, these are the programs that we want to offer that we were talking about, so education and skills training and arts therapy. And there's a 3D model of um, the site plan. We're currently starting our fundraising, so um, we've created our budget for the center and we want to first purchase the piece of land, which would be 25,000 Canadian dollars. And then we have the first phase, which is the first two buildings. So the land purchase, the water well, the electricity in the first two buildings of the center that can be used multi-purpose as classrooms and there'll be a lot of outdoor teaching areas at the beginning will be 200,000 Canadian dollars. So um, we just wanted to share that with you guys, show you guys the plan that we have and um, this here is a, a site plan where you can see a few of the first two buildings. There's a classroom wing with libraries, there's a studio wing with art spaces. We have a daycare facility where younger children can receive primary school education while their parents or their mom um, can go to the adult education class and get her schooling. And then we have some residences for people who are homeless and for volunteers who come over. And we have sports programs and a soccer field out the back and a gymnasium that we want to build. So here's another view of it from the back, looking in from the sports programs. And so the thing that we want to do is, this being our first project, we wanted to start in Sierra Leone because that's where Fascinate is from and we have connections there. And we wanted to um, get our footing with the foundation being our first project. 
And then the goal is we want to continue to expand and we want to build more rehabilitation centers in many different countries that have been going through war and who currently go through war and are using child soldiers to have a place where children can come, where we can partner with the UN, we can partner with UNICEF, and for children that don't have a place to go, we can help with the long-term rehabilitation care that they need. And we, we're really happy to start in BC because um, like the, all the architects so far is like volunteer work from our architects and um, people in BC um, are really willing to help and that's really really inspirational so we're really happy and grateful that we're starting out here in BC. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to if you want to take part or volunteer or ask us a question yeah, we have many volunteer opportunities. We wanted to share this idea with you guys and um, we wanted to spread the word about it. So um, we do have fundraising that we're going to be starting to do. Currently we've raised just over $5,000 and we're just about to launch our major fundraising. Um, if you want to get involved in any volunteer opportunities, we have a lot of community outreach. We want to get into schools to share Fascinating Story, to share our story and what we want to do and get kids involved. And um, we have also like opportunities with project building for people to come over with us to Africa. Um, we want to make it a mix of people, volunteers coming from all over the world and the people who live there to build the center and to run the programs to provide opportunity and jobs for the people that live there as well. And um, we have some stuff with us today. Uh, come up and see us. We're going to be over there in that corner. And um, we have some flyers. We have some little buttons and stuff. If you want to make a donation, you can. You can also go online and donate and join the conversation and spread the word. We want to sh share awareness about this issue because we feel like not enough people know about what's going on in the world with child soldiers and we just want people to be inspired to get involved and to make a difference in this. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to do this alone. We want to do it with everyone. We want to work with the community. We want this to be a community-based uh, um, um, project. So if you're interested, give us a call, uh, uh, holla us on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, on our website. We're good at getting um, back to people. We'll set up um, a meeting and talk to you guys. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you.